Okay, guys, uh, we'd like to welcome you and thank you guys for showing up. Hopefully everybody's having a really great DEF CON. A um, lot of great talks out there. We're hoping that ours is at least mediocre for you guys. Um, we're going to be discussing 10 years in bug bounties and what we've learned, how we've learned from my perspective as a triager and the enemy, so to speak. Um, if anybody has submitted stuff, who all has submitted stuff to bug bounties? Right. Now, who all has been frustrated with triage? Okay. So, yeah, I'll be the bad guy today. Um, Nick's here. He is one of the top hackers. He'll introduce himself and his credentials also. And he's going to be speaking from the researcher side. That said, I'm also a researcher. So we're going to be kind of having a discussion as to how can you have the best experience as a bug bounty hunter and have the best chance of success and what does success look like. So that's going to be what we're going through with this talk. So hopefully you guys get something out of it. So, uh, how many of you are full-time bug bounty hunter here? Just one. Sort of. <laughs> so, <laughs> He's so we kind of uh, we kind of uh, uh, doing this talk because uh, uh, I just want to. Uh, I've been I've been into bug bounty since a decade, so uh, I'm just trying to explain my all the experiences uh, and how uh, a bug bounty uh, can be a full-time career uh, for you as well. So uh, it's kind of. Uh, daytime job as well uh, and nighttime too <laughs> so uh, i've been uh, i've been doing a lot of bug bounties on uh, synac platform and uh, i recently been uh, awarded as a synac red team legend uh, i also uh, founder of uh, b sites ahmedabad it's uh, it's a conference in it's big, biggest conference in india and uh, i also have been uh, advisor to uh, an ASM product. So, Charlie. Guys, um, generally, I'd like to say hi. Um, I have a really unusual background. A lot of people in the security space do. A lot of us are not just coming straight out of school as bug bounty hunters, as Red Team. Um, I spent over two decades in customer service and uh, dealing with uh, as an international translator, an international manager for an airline. Um, then decided I love technology. It's always been a passion of mine. I was the guy who built Napster servers. I got my uh, MCSE for amusement one time. So I was that guy who grew up with these old systems and just loved it enough that then I started really studying, coming back into the field and uh, was really, really blessed to have an opportunity to come in as a triager and in Synax Bolden Related Operations team. Um, I have also helped uh, go over 2,400 different assessments um, and have probably, I think last poll was somewhere around 40,000 individual reports. So I've seen quite a few things. I've talked to some people who I have actually triaged their reports. So a um, few of in the audience. Um, I have headed developments on some products around OWASP, NIST, OSINT, API, Headless API, and uh, most recently some AI testing. So. A lot of breadth on our testing and how we go about these things. So uh, I'll walk you through uh, my journey, how how I started and uh, uh, how I continue my career, how how I continue my uh, full time bug bounty hunting uh, stuff, and uh, uh, what 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 uh, what are my experiences and what are my uh, uh, failures, uh, how how I keep keep on continuing and finding bugs and uh, uh, and and finding. Uh, and uh, earning from it. So uh, I started from uh, in, to, in, in 2013. So uh, I wasn't aware about uh, bug bounties at that time because there is not not much exposures uh, at, uh, of bug bounties at that time. Only Google, uh, Google and uh, PayPal was running uh, bug bounty programs at that time, and uh, it's not it's not it's not uh, that much visible uh, to uh, anybody like. Uh, a non uh, a non per, uh, bug bounty person and uh, so uh, so uh, i uh, dropped out from college uh, because i do not like much much of uh, I, I do not have uh, much interest in their uh, um, knowledge and stuff like that so uh, i dropped uh, in 2012 and uh, i started looking for the job so i accidentally uh, joined a uh, joined an ethical hacking uh, training company and uh, uh, i uh, i uh, usually go out of money uh, like uh, in in less than less than a month and uh, 
I had no idea about uh, bug bounties and stuff. And uh, so uh, uh, one day, uh, one of my uh, co-worker, uh, he was uh, he was sitting on a computer and uh, uh, he was uh, uh, submitting some accesses to uh, PayPal. And uh, after a few days, uh, uh, he got some bounty from the PayPal. So he posted a posted an image on uh, Facebook. So Facebook was quite a uh, used application at that time. So uh, he posted a photo on uh, Facebook, and after a few days, I uh, I've seen I've seen that uh, photo. And uh, uh, next day, I I went to went to the office and asked him uh, what exactly is this. So he described me that uh, com uh, some companies uh, pay uh, bounties if you uh, submit some vulnerabilities to uh, them so then uh, from from there i got introduced to uh, uh, bug bounties and uh, uh, since then uh, i'm uh, and uh, since then uh, like uh, i i started doing a lot of research on what other companies are there to uh, which which is running the independent programs and uh, uh, i only get like two companies just google and paypal at, uh, during that time, uh, and no other companies uh, was running an independent program. So there was no, uh, there was, uh, right now there, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, bug bounty uh, platforms uh, though, uh, that, are, uh, that are running a uh, lot of programs over, over, uh, over them, but uh, there was not much, uh, not much uh, exposure of uh, bug bounty uh, platforms during that time, but uh, uh, but more of a uh, independent programs running on uh, running their bug bounty themselves. I think there was an interesting point you made there is that the bug bounty space um, is very much a show me thing. You can be the guy who is a doctorate, certed up, has every cert out there, you've run SANS, you've been the SANS instructor, but if you can't put rubber on the road, the guy who doesn't even have a high school degree is going to beat you. This is a very egalitarian space. I can say on our end as a triage team, we don't look at that. I don't care what your certs are. I care what you found. So this is a space that all that stuff is a matter of your skill set and what you do. And so I think there's a really good thought there is that none of that matters. And this is a chance for you guys to start working and get some of the best in the world at fighting Google engineers and seeing if you're smarter. The good news is they have to be right 100%. We only have to be right once. So, uh, so when when I was searching for uh, Google uh, bug bounties, I came across a lot of uh, blogs, um, and there was one blogs, and uh, uh, this guy, this guy is a good friend of mine now, uh, but uh, at that time uh, he was unknown. But uh, uh, he just went to the uh, some uh, Google uh, uh, Google application, and he writes some. Uh, 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 simple access payload and uh, the payload got triggered so he got bounty out of it so I was like he got a very simple bug uh, simple bug uh, from uh, from the uh, from in in the Google and got a bounty out of it, out of it. so I got uh, really uh, motivated out of it so uh, I thought that let's try let's try these things on other Google products as well but uh, uh, I later realized that uh, uh, these these stuff looks uh, simple, but uh, you have to uh, dig a lot deeper, and you have to know about uh, uh, Google products and services to actually uh, actually uh, get these issues. Uh, but these are uh, I mean these are just old stuff. Uh, you can't find them uh, nowadays. Uh, only if you are lucky. So. Uh, so I thought of uh, give it a, a try uh, to uh, Google bug bounty first. So I was uh, during that time I was uh, no idea about the bug. Just um, submitting a simple uh, any random stuff uh, without any logic and uh, simply getting either uh, rejected, no impact, duplicates, or Hall of Fame only. So. I I uh, I uh, reported like whole year uh, to Google, and uh, I just got uh, duplicates or rejected reports. So one of the interesting things on this is that 
when we're out hunting and I'm just as guilty of it as anybody else, you see something, you get excited. Um, let me ask this. How many blue teamers do we have and developers on the back end that are in the room? A few you guys, right? As a researcher, it's really easy to sit and say, oh my gosh, I just found this. And go, it's not a duplicate. It's another path. But you got to ask yourself, is that the same code on the back end? Because Amazon doesn't code each product separately, guys. We know that. So it's the same fix. We've got to kind of ask ourselves as a researcher, wait a minute, is this really a duplicate? Is the same code on the back end? You've got to get a little critical. You've also got to think, and he said, about impact. The problem with this is, let me ask this. If you're looking at, say, an HSTS flag missing, what's the malicious use case? What are you going to do with it? Why nothing? If you can do something, show me. And so very much when you talk to a triager, show me the malicious use case. If you've got a cross-site scripting, but it's unauthenticated, what are you going to really do with that? Show me that you can pop a document.cookie, document.domain, and then explain to me, yeah, that way I can get their credentials out. I would just have to send that to my server. That way I can clearly see the malicious use. Make sure you show that impact. I would say 80% of our rejections are probably because of low impact. And that it's just you haven't proven what that malicious use case is that now I need to go to my client, tell them I need you to spend engineering time, not only money on this bounty, but now I need you to spend cycles off your engineering to fix this. And that's my business use case I need to make as a triage or is it that's worth fixing. So whenever you're looking at these things, we can't just look at it as a pure security thing. Um, as security practitioners, we want every last I dotted and T crossed and perfection, but some of these things are just acceptable risk and we have to think about it and go, is it really okay? It might be. Um, unfortunately, we've had to look at it and say Google API keys are very similar to this process. The fix is extremely expensive. Google has said it's not something that they're particularly interested in and nobody's done it and it's gonna cost them a lot of money to fix it when the risk is pretty minimal. So we have to kind of consider those things as security practitioners and just not say we have to fix everything Let's fix the important things. And so when we're looking at a report, I always have to ask myself, and I'm as guilty as anybody when I'm doing my own reports is getting excited about the flaw. I have to come back and go, is this really a risk? What's my impact? And so a lot of what Nix was seeing here at the beginning is duplicate, no impact. And those are what people run into all the time as beginning balloting hunters. Um, I, I know a couple of people in this room that have had the same experience as me. Somebody new will come in. They'll get excited. They're going to submit a dozen reports. That's Friday night. They're going out with their buddies going, I'm going to quit my job because I just awarded $6,000 in bounties. I am the most badass mofo on this planet. I'm quitting my job. He goes out, he parties. Saturday, he parties. He maxes out the credit card because I've got $7,000 in bounties. And Monday, I reject it all in 10 minutes. <laughs> he does not have happy words for me. Um, and I'm going, yeah, this is all on our low impact list. Did you read the documentation? And so these are the things you have to think through is just slow down and ask yourself, what do I need to do? What is that triage you're going to do? Because their job is to be a little critical and to force you to get better. So show the impact. So, uh, so if if something didn't work out you have to uh, move on uh, move on from uh, that particular thing and uh, you have to i mean there are a lot of lot of stuff in the world so you can uh, move on and do other stuff too so maybe maybe you will get lucky to uh, have more uh, more issue, uh, i mean more uh, success on on that part, that particular program rather than the previous one so uh, so I moved on, uh, moved on at that time, and uh, uh, I heard about uh, heard about a uh, uh, Nokia uh, Nokia uh, phone was uh, there, there was a Nokia phone coming uh, coming at that time. So uh, they they were running a, a VDP program, but their VDP program is something like that. They uh, if 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 you're finding any critical vulnerabilities uh, on their program, so they giving out uh, their smartphones to uh, to hackers. So. Uh, so I, what I did, I uh, listed out all their uh, uh, assets and I started uh, fuzzing for just for SC uh, SQLite because uh, I was kind of uh, uh, more uh, proficient into uh, finding a SQLite at that time. So this is how uh, we react when a new program, when we see a new program. So uh, 
So, like I said, uh, list down all their assets and started testing uh, the uh, SQLi. And uh, uh, one of their assets, I got uh, a SQL error. And uh, uh, further, I went ahead and just a sim uh, one or two commands, and I was able to dump their whole DB. So, uh, from here, they actually uh, sent me some Lumia 820 devices. So I think the one thing that we can take from this part of what Nick's did, and you heard him say, this was an area I was interested in. If you are a, have an area that you have an interest in or that you have experience in your full-time job, if you're a SQL database engineer, <laughs> you're in good shape uh, because you know what to do with those databases to get SQL injections. If you are a, a web designer, you've got a lot of that stuff to understand how to abuse HTML. So use the stuff that you're interested in. And all of a sudden he said, I focus on just SQLi. Focus on that one thing. Then take that one thing, run with it until you become the expert at it. You're going to start getting to where you feel it. I've heard these guys a lot of times just say, I felt this. I, I just knew it was there. That sixth sense is developed by repetition and doing it over and over. And when you do that, you become really proficient in that thing. And so what you're seeing, I think, that Nick is, Nick is describing is focus on that subject. Don't let yourself go for everything. The field is huge. Focus on one or two things until you get proficient at it. Then you can add a new thing. And so, yeah, smartphones are not bad. Also, he's shifted to a program that had less competition. Um, sometimes, especially if you're new, going up against guys like this, it's going to be a tough road. If you can go against the people, you know, who are a little less skilled because he's not going out for smartphones today. You know, maybe or recognition programs, you know, there may be a good point to going there and learning and using that as an education tool. So, uh, key, key takeaways from the, this is, uh, don't give up anytime. And, uh, oh, when one opportunity closes, the another opens up. So, uh, so, uh, if you if you find any um, critical vulnerabilities on any of the assets and and if you get uh, uh, if you get uh, um, good a good bug and uh, uh, and a good reward so you will get a lot of motivation out of it so what motivation do motivation uh, actually uh, do uh, a lot of big things like if you if you get uh, like in bug bounties motivation counts uh, counts a lot because if you are uh, motivated then you will be able to find um, uh, more impactful vulnerabilities so uh, so i i was i got motivated because of uh, the last bug i uh, last critical bug i found uh, on on the nokia program and uh, i continued uh, so 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 mid uh, in mid to 2000 uh, 20, uh, 13, uh, there was more programs comes up like uh, this, such as uh, Mozilla started their uh, web web services uh, bug bounties. Uh, Barracuda Labs also has uh, as a, a uh, web application firewall uh, bug bounties running, and they they actually given out uh, live devices uh, on uh, on a virtual platform. And uh, the PayPal is uh, running since 2009. Squido, eBay, uh, all of all of these running uh, independent programs. Uh, so uh, I was I was able to get uh, some uh, some issues on uh, on these on these programs and uh, uh, get some bounties out of it. So uh, like I said, the, uh, these are all uh, things which I uh, did when I got uh, some motivation from the last bugs. Uh, so it's it's kind of it's kind of thing that if I continue doing uh, Google, I might get a uh, bound five hundred dollar or uh, one thousand dollar bounty after two or three years. But I lost I can lose all, all my motivation uh, till then because uh, you are doing bug bounties th till three years and you are all, uh, only getting five five hundred or thousand uh, dollars or or uh, something like that. But uh, what what I did, uh, I uh, keep on learning things uh, from my rejections. So uh, I I get a fa failure from uh, from um, Google, but I also ask them why uh, why you rejected my bug. So 
they they actually explain you that why uh, we rejected so uh, say so they also also tells you that uh, if you can do this then we can accept that bug and uh, uh, um, move it to the uh, move it to the award category so uh, that is how uh, the uh, motivation works yeah yeah and one important note here from the triage side it's your triagers are always happy to tell you why something wasn't accepted. I don't think any of our triagers just go, I don't have time, go away. Because what we're trying to do is show you what, number one, did not work so that way, quite frankly, you don't fill up my inbox with junk and keep doing the same thing again. Um, so if you get a rejection, ask and try and understand why. And a lot of times they'll be able to tell you, but if you can do this, now I'll take it. So that's your kind of explanation. And this usually resolves around impact, but they'll be able to tell you, hey, this is just, we're going to be low impact. We kind of don't care about this. You know, you had an IDOR. Yeah, you could get into somebody else's account, but you know what? You weren't logged in. You're just changing their basket at, you know, the pizza place and getting rid of a pizza. Who cares? <laughs> you know, you're not getting them to pay for your pizza. So understand why they're looking at it the way they are. For example, cross-site scripting. If you're not logged in, there's no data to come out of it. No, there's no malicious use. And they'll be clearly just happy to say, hey, it's an unauthenticated cross-site scripting. I can't take that. There's no impact. So ask them, communicate. They are very happy to communicate these things. And part of their job is to think through them and go, okay, why won't I accept this? So they know the reason. So talk to them, take that feedback and learn. Um, I've seen way too many people come in and just say, I submit the flaw, it gets rejected, and I tell you why, and next week you submit the same flaw, and it gets rejected, and I tell you why, and a few days later you submit a flaw, so just the same, and we go through this process, and it keeps knocking down the researcher's motivation, which is not at all what we want to do, but it's taking that feedback and understanding what they're saying. They are now your teachers to help educate you to how to make yourself a better pen tester in your normal day job, how to become a better bug bounty hunter, how to do, how to improve overall. It may be that we're saying improve your reporting techniques, you know, that I need more detailed steps. A lot of times you guys will be in that app for hours. I have never seen it before. I'm walking into a blind to reproduce your vuln and try and understand, does it have impact? If you haven't clearly explained it, clearly showed me, maybe I can't do it because I don't have the details and the knowledge of, oh, I redid this. So make sure you're very clear to us, explain it, understand why we rejected it and ask questions. So, uh, so in, uh, in 2014 or mid 2014, there was, uh, uh, I got to know about, uh, these three platforms running, uh, some bug bounty programs on their platform. And, uh, um, and, uh, while, while, uh, hack one and bug crowd was available to sign up directly and, uh, and the CINAC was doing some uh, hands-on assessment, uh, which includes uh, written and uh, ID verification or something like that. And uh, uh, and uh, uh, once you uh, once you uh, once you passed on the uh, written and uh, ID verification, you uh, you will be onboarded on the on the platform. But uh, but but the other two platforms uh, they are uh, directly available for sign up. I guess uh, Hacker One. Hacker One do not have a uh, do not have a uh, 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 a web application bug bounty platform um, bug bounty program until uh, the Yahoo comes in in 2014 end I guess. I just but, noticed this vintage logo. I hadn't seen that forever. <laughs> so one of the things that kind of is interesting about the bug bounty model, and a lot of you guys are kind of like, why did those companies exist? First of all, for you guys, it consolidates it gives you one place you can find a bunch of targets instead of having to Google all over the place. Additionally, you don't have to send it to the company and hope that they don't just go, yeah, I'm going to reject that, but uh, thank you, and I'm going to fix it anyway. You know, we're kind of your middleman there to protect you. Um, but that said, we're also hired for the company's protection to reduce the noise um, and go through and say, is this valid for them on their behalf? And we're an impartial third party. I can tell you that when I paid a phone, there was nothing. It doesn't come out of my pocket. Um, it was a big joke to a lot of people are like, oh, they're lowering my CVSS. They don't want to pay this. They don't want to pay that. We're in the business to pay volumes. If I don't pay any volumes on the target, my client gets mad. So I need to pay these volumes. I need, if I've got a bonus out there, I need to kind of pay it. That's why I'm putting a bonus on it. 
the money it becomes, I can say this after paying thousands and thousands, probably well over a couple, uh, probably half a million dollars out that I've spent personally. It's monopoly money to me. I press that button. It's not 500. It's not a thousand. It's not $4,000. It's just a button. It doesn't matter to me. It never processes in my head that I just spent $10,000. So your triagers are not sitting and thinking, you go, I need to hold on to this money. That's not how it works for us. We don't even get really accountable for it. It's just, did we do it right? Was it a valid loan? Yeah. Did you pay what it's supposed to be paid? Yep. Okay, good. So your triagers are not trying to hold this money back. We don't get bonuses based off what I didn't pay you guys. You know, that's not a, it'd be a whole different game if it was, but. So understand that the bounty platforms are actually here to number one, show you where everything's at so that you can be efficient with your time and not have to search new projects. Number two, we're your impartial third party to make sure that what you're submitting is good for our clients and that the clients are being fair to you. So uh, so when uh, HackerOne started their uh, first uh, program, uh, that is Yahoo. So I got the first bug and that is uh, uh, Yahoo Mail, uh, Yahoo Mobile Mail accesses. And uh, uh, they paid me only two seven seven dollars, and uh, so I was I was confused at why it is paid so low because it was under their uh, Yahoo Mobile email that is their main application. So uh, I think uh, then then uh, I thought I I probably lagged at demonstrating the impact here, and uh, that's why uh, the bounty was so low. Then uh, the buck crowd, uh, I submitted like uh, uh, 48 plus 29, I don't know how, how much it is. And uh, uh, so 20, just 29 accepted and 48 was duplicate. So uh, when, when you do a uh, bug bounty, duplicates are part of it. And uh, uh, you uh, you just have to uh, take, uh, take into consideration that you will get the duplicates because someone will way faster than you uh, in submit vulnerabilities. If if someone has automation, uh, auto automation, they will be more fast than you. And then the last, the, rep uh, the report writing. So, so uh, I had a worse report writing uh, at that time. And uh, uh, it was it, it it was causing uh it was causing a lot of uh, problems to me uh so uh that that is that is the struggle so yeah i'm gonna say this on report writing um i've worked with a lot of our top guys um and have said some of them come back and said at first i hated y'all you know i thought y'all were just running me through the ringer i felt you were gonna have to do all this stuff jumping through all the hoops and later they said you know at my day job, I'm now 10 times better at writing a report because of what you made me do. Um, we don't want these reports that say, there's an injection. Here's your line. Impact, I took your stuff. I, you got to give me more than that. You've got to write it as a compelling story. Because when I go to a CISO, and particularly if I go to a CEO, I hate to tell you guys, he doesn't know nor care what an IDOR is. He doesn't care what SQL I is. He doesn't know that's not his job to know those things. He goes, SQL, I, I don't, whatever. If I tell him, I just downloaded your entire database and can delete your entire uh, production database, and I know who all your customers are, are you caring now? Now he cares because he knows that that's a newsworthy item. Tell me that scary story. Do this in detail. Show me what can happen. You don't have to actually go out and publish it on the dark web, of course. <laughs> that wouldn't work out well for us. Um but if you go ahead and you just say, look, cross-site scripting, I've got document.cookie, I can send this out to my server and now harvest credentials and it's, you know, now it's persistent. Any logged in user, I can pull that from them if they go to that page. I can get your leads, I can get your engineers, I can get your creds too. Now you've told me a scary story that I can take to the client. You've also made it clear to the triage team who may not be as clear on that type of vulnerability as you are, because like we said, you're working to become that world-class expert in it. You may actually know more about that impact. So clarify your impact, write those reports, take a little bit longer and write a more verbose story. Really give us extremely detailed steps as how to reproduce. And then give us some good feedback on how to fix this thing, because you may know more than the engineering team, because to be blunt, they screwed it up in the first place. So tell us, talk to us, be that story writer. 
I know as technical people, we want to keep it concise to the point and no extra fat. In this case, sometimes getting a little wordier is worth the time and will significantly improve your reporting. When you have a poor report that I love, it's clear to me, and now I can start accepting it a lot more. If you start giving me garbage reports that are real brief and real short, it's real easy for me to miss your point and what you're actually getting at. So make sure you explain it, over explain it a little bit. Tell me those scary stories and the impact. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I figured out that what, what are the shortcomings? Uh, it's like uh, always looking, I'm always looking for low hanging fruits. Uh, worst report writing, like in chaining the report to make it more impactful and uh, obviously not so fast in reporting and uh, the target approach. Nick, so I'm going to say one thing about low hanging fruit. Um, when I first started, I thought Metasploit was the answer to everything. Um, great tool, a lot of fun. In two and a half years, I saw exactly one vault that was found with Metasploit and I was doing dozens a day. It's a very well known tool that's low hanging fruit. Your dev team should be using it. If they're not, they need to be, right? These scanners, we're gonna have to go deeper. Um, you're gonna have to really learn about the exploit, not just depend on the low hanging fruit popping from the scanners. If that's what you're depending on, you got a long road. You've got to get a little more creative, you know, and do a little more. Some things are easy. Yeah, there's a few, sometimes cross-site scriptings are really simple, but sometimes they're not. You've got to go a little farther and the scanners may not point it out to you, you may have to start thinking through it and get a little more creative. So I kind of started, uh, I kind of started uh, uh, taking things a little seriously and uh, uh, I was delving into more impactful uh, findings and blogs by other researchers, uh, learning from the community and exploring other pen test reports, uh, excellently written reports to figure out what actually going wrong from my end and uh, uh, ad adapting the platforms, how platforms are working uh, what uh, what are the talk target rotations and uh, what programs are uh, less uh, less eyes and uh, what programs has more eyes and uh, what uh, and obviously the CTFN labs are uh, quite helpful because uh, you will get to learn how the exploits is working and uh, and the one more thing the uh, one target you have to target one one at a time. So uh, you will get a better uh, better idea about how the target is working and how the how their uh, business logic is. And, uh, yeah. So um, learning from the community, one of the big things I've seen, and I, I'm going to say something a little blasphemous right now. Um, if you come into bug bounty hunting and you're looking for the money, you're probably going to have a hard road. If you come into it and say, "I have paid thousands on courses." I have paid thousands for school and I've paid a lot of money to get certifications. This is free. You're going to be in the right mind space. Let the money come when it will, right? That's a bonus. This is free training that you may actually get a little bit, little bit of money for. As you start seeing that, you're going to start finding success. The people who I know who came into it who said, I just want to show up with my skills are very successful. The people who come into it and immediately I'm like, I need to pay a bill next weekend. I need to have beer for Friday you're going to have a hard time. You're going to get frustrated. So come into it mind space wise and say, I'm, I'm wanting to learn and use the community. Um, whether it is discord, um, the different channels that we have set up, uh, Synac, we have Slack channels that you can actually just reach out and say, Hey, Nick's, I'm kind of stuck. Now he's not going to go and say, Hey, here's a cross site script and go find it. Cause he's also looking for it. Right. But if you're stuck and you have a good idea, you're like, I just don't have this payload. Where can I look for more info? That's where you can reach out for help from the community. Um, nobody's going to give you the free answer, but you can start getting, figure out how to get better. And you've got access to world-class trainers because they are doing it. So reach out, educate yourself, use this as an education tool, use the community. Um, each of the platforms has a community person who is there to help you succeed. That's their job. So use that. So, uh, in my previous point, I, uh, I uh, delve into uh, target approach and uh, platform adoption. So what uh, I mean to say from the platform adoption is, uh, let's say H1, uh, Hack1 and Buckcrowd was uh, accepting reports uh, on first come first serve basis, but uh, the uh, other platform like Synac is uh, using a quality rule uh, during 2016 to 2023. Uh, and the quality rule is something like that. 
that you have they choose a best written report uh, in during that time to uh, and uh, uh, even if if even if you uh, submitted last they uh, and and the report is fine then the then only uh, then they submit the last report on uh, on on the basis of just the report writing but this has been remote now and uh, they will they start you uh, they start using first come first serve only so that is the uh, platform adoption because uh, uh, you have to you have to know that what is going on on the on the platform and uh, oh, uh, uh, how how to work work on the particular uh, platform yeah each platform is a little different um and so when you're working with them make sure you know what your rules are um the first thing when you get on a platform read all the rules and <laughs> that's really kind of simple um i'll say this Cenex set setup is fairly complicated because you've got a vpn you've got a vm you know and you've got dedicated ips that you're coming from um when you're going with some others, maybe you need to note, I'm a researcher in there because you're not on that secured network. They don't know who you are and you're sending attack traffic at live target guys. If they don't know who you are, that may alarm them. So go and find out the rules. Make sure you're really clear before you go start sending attack traffic and figure out which platform works for you. There is no one answer. There is different platforms because they have different strengths and weaknesses. So find out what works for you. And a lot of people work on all of them. There's no downside to that. Um, one interesting note, even though the quality rule, the QR is now not a thing. Um, the reason why that happened was to make sure that the reports had good quality and that they were written well. Um, so you go back to remember what I said about write the report. Well, that was what we were trying to get at there. So it was that important that we actually had an entire rule around this and have platform based stuff on it. So. Just remember that the triager is going to very favorably respond to that good report writing. So uh, when when I have uh, all uh, all of this in mind and uh, uh, I refine my uh, skills, I actually able to find good some good vulnerabilities uh, starting from uh, the uh, hello sign one. This was found in uh, 2015. Uh, it was straight uh, uh, an SSRF uh, that is uh, called through the event callback functionality, and uh, I was able to uh, call back their uh, uh, past WD file. So, and uh, the Microsoft started their bug bounty program for online services in 2014, late 2014. I submitted multiple reports as. Uh, uh, and 90% uh, uh, reports got accepted, while 10% got uh, duplicate only. So I, I, I was become pretty fast. Uh, I uh, understand. Uh, I uh, understand w what to do uh, for a particular program, and I target only one program at a time, and uh, uh, I focus more on uh, high impact vulnerabilities and. Uh, uh, then I then later I uh, I got uh, like uh, listed into MSRC top hundred and uh, also uh, uh, awarded with this uh, laptop. So then uh, then I came of in full time pursuit because I created a back financial backup out of uh, whatever bug bounties I have got. Uh, I stepped away from nine to five job and. Uh, I uh, turned into the full-time bug bounty hunter. So that that's how that's how you can start uh, uh, being a uh, full-time bug bounty hunter. You create a backup for yourself, and uh, then only you can step away uh, from a, a daily job and uh, uh, ha start start doing a full-time bug bounty. Because uh, bug bounty has a lot of money, but uh, it also gives gives you a lot of stress too. Yeah, so one thing I'll say is that we've noticed that, first of all, he started incorporating these techniques of listening, improving his reporting, focusing, and starting to see success. One thing really important to notice, and I've told people this a lot of times, if you're going to go out and Saturday, you're going to go, yep, I'm going to go bug hunt. I'm going to spend four hours on it, and I'm going to do a few hours on Sunday and see what happens. Your odds of success are almost zero, okay? If that's your first time out there, it's going to take you a while, guys. Average volumes come in. Your first average volume is 20 hours of research, okay? But then, as he said, it keeps getting faster. Then it becomes 10. Then it becomes 5. Then it becomes 2. Then it becomes 30 minutes. Then it becomes 10 minutes to find a SQL I. But you have to put in the time. If you're planning on doing this, I'd say there's a 40-hour rule here. 
then if you're going to have a 98% chance of success, plan on spending 40 hours dedicated and have most of it on one to two targets. Get to know that thing really well. You know, spend that 40 hours, then assess whether this is for you or not. Because if you quit too soon, you're not going to really benefit from it. You've got to be persistent. You're going to start doing that and start seeing income coming in. Now, you may have a little shoebox of income that you're like, okay, I'm making enough to take my family to a really nice dinner this month. That's what I got off Bug Bounty is that really nice dinner, you know, great steakhouse, great. And you may be happy with that. Maybe that's the, you want the little bucket that's enough to make a car payment. Maybe you start realizing it's getting bigger. Um, we had one of our analysts, really bright guy, senior analyst, paid him fairly well, of course. Um, and he was bug hunting on the side. And on very limited, very hardened targets, we started seeing he was making a lot of money to the point that he was making more as a bug hunter than he was as a full-time security analyst. And everybody asked him, why don't you quit? He goes, well, I like this, you know, guaranteed income, right? Okay, fair enough. Finally, he got to the point that, and he had the money bank back, sitting in the bank to float him for a while. But he realized that he was actually losing money by working full-time as a security analyst. And that was when he decided to quit and go full-time. So wait on the money and use the education time and start watching where that bucket of money is doing, how often it comes in, and then you can make those decisions. Please do not jump off next week and go, I'm that good. I've got my OSCP. I've got my OSCE. I'm going to become a full-time bounty hunter because that very well may turn out to be a very bad financial decision, even if you're the best out there. You've got to have some time to figure out what is your income going to look like from this. And so use that time to spin up and figure that out. And that's when you can start stepping aside from the nine to five with this. So when you got uh, motivation and some confidence, you can do uh, better uh, in the longer terms. But uh, you need to back by some uh, good findings in order to uh, keep those uh, keep those uh, bug bounty hunter uh, carrier running. So uh, I, I'm uh, moving on to some key discoveries that I've uh, found during my uh, during my uh, bug bounty hunting. Uh, a couple of them, uh, like first one is a, a, a SQL injection in uh, in a biggest e-commerce solution uh, in the world. So uh, you can guess guess about it. Uh, uh, so I, I was onboarded uh, on a target at uh, uh, at this uh, e-commerce solution, and uh, while modifying the profile, I came a, came across a country ID. And uh, just a sec. Okay, sorry. I think this slide. I don't know how it comes. So. Uh, yeah, so uh, it was uh, an online car marketplace, and uh, I start. So I started uh, started uh, running uh, uh, for brute force on uh, directories and files, and uh, the the application keep redirecting me to the login page on each directory and uh, file file brute force like that. Uh, each each hit got getting redirected to uh, uh, 302 and it it it, it was kind of loop uh, and uh, the I tried I tried to change the methods but uh, the I, I got the same result out of it but uh, so so what I do I noticed the application is using a third party solutions so uh, what I do I do uh, I uh, went to the uh, third party solution and found that uh, it it was a uh, hosted in in invoice solution they are using so what I do I uh, uh, I uh, went ahead and uh, 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 see if there are any demo version available of the application I couldn't find any demo version available anywhere so uh, what I did I I uh, I uh, did a uh, uh, subdomain brute force of uh, of the third party provider and i found uh, i found uh, a demo version running and uh, the demo version uh, uh, these are all, uh, all the demo version uh, that are, that are available for that application and uh, after exploring our bit uh, uh, and watching the uh, youtube videos uh, i found that uh, once uh, uh, I mean, um, there was uh, there was a uh, 
uh, I found uh, like uh, I, I I was looking for a uh, path uh, a path from the from the application which I couldn't get. But uh, uh, after after uh, getting the demo demo version of it, I uh, found that uh, the application do not have any authentication, but it was total unauthenticated. They have uh, added some uh, added some uh, rules uh, rules in the path that uh, that 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 was uh, denying me to uh, actually accessing the uh, direct path in the application. So, uh, uh, so what I did, I just uh, uh, I just used that demo demo version to uh, uh, to uh, retract all, all the paths, and I, I just changed the domain name from uh, from the application, and uh, I started fuzzing for uh, SQLite vulnerability on a, on a, all the parameters that. Uh, that has been into uh, that has been used into the application, and I found uh, I found that uh, I was uh, able to uh, dump their all of their all their all of their uh, databases because uh, one parameter was vulnerable to SQLite. Then uh, this is one of uh, one of the uh, banking asset that uh, I got. So. Uh, what they are doing that uh, they are uh, they are fetching one uh, javascript file uh, from a cdn cdn file name parameter and uh, uh, what i did uh, so so cdn file name takes uh, file input from uh, from file input such as uh, user underscore tools dot bundle so in the in the comment i have seen uh, there was a, there was a comment that uh, uh, the uh, f the file comment uh, which is having an api dot github dot com and uh, that uh, user dot user under tools dot bundle was uh, uh, printed uh, printed in that uh, particular path so i so i thought that uh, let's do one thing that's uh, uh, user dot dot slash to uh, come on to the uh, come on to the uh, root path and then try to use uh, api dot github dot com to uh, query the internal uh, internal uh, sir, uh, internal data uh, uh, from 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 the from from the Git, github api so i just use their events uh, events uh, query and uh, i was able to uh, dump their uh, internal events all all the events from the uh, from the cdn file parameter as only because uh, after because uh, the uh, dot dot slash was uh, taking all the file part to api dot github dot com only. Do you want to add something? Right now, uh, this is your vault, so I'm going to let you go with that. Um, you know, some of the things that I'm thinking about in the back of my head right now is just the persistence, and some of the things that we're kind of looking at is how do we succeed? You know, and so I'd say the persistence, keeping at it learning those are some of your key takeaways for how you start doing this and how you start making money um, how do we start succeeding in bug bounty and just understanding that there is a learning path um so that's kind of where i'm thinking right now but keep running with the bones man um i always like bones so uh, this was an account takeover vulnerability so after doing uh subdomain discovery i stumbled up across an um subdomain and it was giving a 403 uh, forbidden error so uh, the 404 forbidden error looks interesting to me so uh, what i did i just did a quick google search uh, and uh, it was listing out a lot of applications but uh, one of the applications looks interesting so uh, but it was asking for some uh, dvn id uh, which i do, do not know because that is some unique thing uh, so I searched. So I searched everywhere. Uh, DVN IDs were not available anywhere. Uh, uh, so I just did a simple, uh, simple Google search on uh, DVN ID on images, images uh, section, and I got uh, I got some uh, yumpu.com uh, having a lot of contract IDs available uh, under the uh, under 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 the papers, and uh, they have. Them as a, a DVN ID uh, as as a DVN ID uh, field, so uh, I collected uh, those all all those DVN IDs from the Google Images section uh, on the uh, and all those uh, all those uh, 
images are available on yumpu dot on some yumpu dot com site. I don't know how to how to get it. Uh, so I. Uh, so I uh, in the in the subject section they have a lot of uh, these TVN IDs available. I used those TVN IDs and I went to the application. I just used the uh, forget password and uh, I I have seen that the uh, the pass the the application was uh, actually fetching the password for that particular TVN ID and sending to me uh, sending to the user uh, in the plain text format in the uh, in one request itself. So I just used that uh, particular password and DVN ID to log into the application. So one thing I'm going to point out here is that uh, you said something really interesting. I didn't know what it was, so I started looking for it. Google it. Google is your friend, right? Um, I don't know how we would ever begin to hack before Google was what it is now. Um, a lot of your time is going to be spent researching. Nobody in this room knows everything about everything in cyber. And if you think you do, I would love to talk to you. Um, look at these things. When you see something you don't understand, take a curiosity. I Many times I've seen something that I've been like, okay, what is it? All of a sudden I find out that is a key piece of information that is not supposed to be shared. This is a private something that is really sensitive. All of a sudden I can start finding out, wait, these are used for that? Really? Okay. Now I'm interested in that parameter that was just something weird beforehand. So take the time to really understand the apps. This is why earlier we said stop. Look at that one target, get to know it. Go and spend five, ten hours on that target to really know it in depth. And part of that's just going to be your research time to understand what all these parameters are. DVM means something. They didn't just come up with that randomly. So what is it? What are they trying to communicate with that number? Understand that, and you're going to have a lot better chance of success and finding the right places to manipulate and poke. So when you said, I went and I Googled it, I wasn't familiar with it. That's part of that time we said, spend a lot of time on that target. Use that curiosity. Of course, a lot of them are going to be nothing interesting. But it's when you find that one interesting that you're like, oh, really? That whole parameter controls the entire account for admins. Interesting. Now I want to play with that one. So it's going to help you focus whenever you start doing these researches on things you don't understand and see it's kind of weirdness. This was a, the another one was an SSR of an ASM solution. Uh, the, the target launched and there was no, no vulnerability submitted on it, no vulnerability accepted on it. So I, this, this makes me curious that why, why? Uh, so I started digging into the application and, uh, I, re, um, so what application is doing, it, uh, starts doing, uh, recon for subdomain IP addresses and all the certs. And it also creates a screenshot of a uh, parent domain too. So I got interested that uh, if it is creating a screenshot of that parent too, uh, maybe I can use, uh, maybe, maybe I can use uh, some domains uh, and uh, redirect that domains to uh, uh, my, uh, my uh, uh, custom payload. And uh, uh, that custom payload might, uh, might comes up, uh, might uh, extract some information from uh, their internal uh, system uh, and capture as a uh, capture it as a screenshot so uh, what i did i so uh, so that that is, that is their application and uh, they are just creating a screenshot uh, of whatever uh, whatever uh, application is so what 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 i did i uh, they they were using uh, uh, Amazon Amazon as a infrastructure services. So what I did, I just put uh, this uh, uh, put put this uh, and uh, try to extract the uh, try to extract the uh, data from the screen uh, their screenshots. But uh, so so that's so that's how the screenshots is. They it was all empty. There was nothing on it. So. Mm, I was I was uh, I was curious that why uh, uh, it's not coming uh, it's not coming as a screenshot. So uh, I was researching more on this uh, application and I found out that uh, they are not using an EC2 but they are using the Lambda. So uh, I went to the Twitter and I searched for uh, what exactly uh, the uh, what how exactly I can do SSR with the Lambda. So I got a, got a, a, a tweet that uh, if you're, uh, if, you're, if someone is using the Lambda function, you can particularly use this particular uh, request uh, to actually query the internal data. So uh, 
next i uh, created another uh, redirect request and uh, uh, it actually read it actually extracting the data from the their lambda function as a screenshot so uh, i again uh, passed it into the, for the execution and uh, what i did uh, uh, it actually captures their uh, lambda uh, lambda uh, whatever uh, lambda event is running internally as a screenshot so uh, that's uh, these are our all uh, uh, key discoveries that I found in um, this solution. So as we're getting to write up, there's been one question that I've asked you before, but I thought it was really kind of an interesting answer. And I think a lot of people here, you are globally known. Um, you're on the Microsoft Hall of Fame, Cenac Legends. You do well. We're up here today. Talk to me a little bit about imposter syndrome. Do you have it still? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I regularly, I mean, um, if you go to go to Twitter and you will find a lot of bug bounty, bug bounty tips. Uh, so you will get those, uh, imposter syndrome because, uh, uh, because looking at those, because, uh, I mean, um, you will find someone like, uh, like you must, you must be missing something. You must be miss missing something out from somewhere. Uh, I mean, someone is more skilled than you and uh, you are lacking some some of the skills because uh, they are getting more bounties more impactful bugs so obviously that that's coming out in, into your mind but maybe uh, that person has uh, uh, has been doing like uh, research from last three four months and uh, then he found that impactful vulnerability so it's it's depends on total situation and yeah. uh, you do not have to panic from that those ones yeah i think that's the key there is don't panic just because you missed something or because you didn't succeed it doesn't mean you're wrong right it just means that hey let's keep going you know and i, I think one of the things you said on that one time that really stuck with me and was that you woke up in the morning and kind of goes am i really here am i this is what i'm doing for my job and you get scared um, and he said, you sit down, start typing, start working, start to get in that mindset. Life starts running well. Okay. Things are going good. Now I'll find a flaw. Now I'll find a second flaw. You know, things are getting rejected. Things are getting accepted. Things, all that's going on in the end of the day. You go, yeah, I got this. And the next morning you wake up and feel like you're fi fake again. Yeah. So I can say this, that stuck with me because I'm like, if he's doing it, then it's not a problem if I'm doing it too. These are normal things for us, especially when you add the full-time aspect of bug bounty and the pressure. So just understand that the mental game is a lot in it and the persistence and understanding that's where you're going to succeed in bug bounty is by being mental and persistent, smart, intelligent, and go after it because yeah, you're competing against him, but he's also here to help you. So, um, like, like, uh, Charlie said that, uh, there are a lot of, uh, lot of, uh, uh challenges while running the uh, long, long time into bug bounties. So, uh, imposter syndrome is one of them. Then, uh, if you are, uh, if you are, uh, if you're not earning one or two or months, uh, you will start doubting yourself, uh, that the, then the burnouts comes in and, uh, the frustration of, uh, if, if reports are rejecting or getting duplicated, the frustration comes, uh, comes in as well. And, uh, all of these comes as a stress on you. So, uh, mental, your mental health gets impacted. So we're getting the signal to wrap it up, I think. Oh, yeah, he's not back there. And so we will have these uh, slides posted so you can go through, see some of the details on this and cover it. But I think the basic thing is, number one, treat this like a game. Understand that it's a puzzle. Own that puzzle and try and just keep it in that mindset. Treat it as fun training and enjoy the process. Keep at it. You're going to get success if you keep at it. It's one of those things, the more you work at it, the more likely you are to succeed. Anything else to add? All right. Well, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Hope you had a good time.